Today we'll recap an action film called The Equalizer. It tells the story of a man named Robert McCall, who lives in Boston. Robert works at a hardware store called Home Mart. He is an ordinary man living a normal life. At work, Robert is friends with an overweight man named Ralphie, who is on a diet program to take the security officer selection exam. Robert has advised Ralphie to avoid high carbohydrate foods and eat more fiber so as to lose weight. We can see he is a very neat person, extremely disciplined in all of his activities. He actually has a habit of calculating how long the activities he does take. For that, he uses the stopwatch function on his watch. In the evening, Robert normally takes some time to read a book at a restaurant he is fond of. He always brings his own tea bags and cutlery, making sure the table is clean and the cutlery is in its right place. McCall is currently reading a book titled Old Man in the Sea. A girl named Alina greets Robert and asks about the story told in the book he's reading. Shortly after, Alina says goodbye to Robert, leaves the place and gets inside a taxi. The next day, Robert gets to work and his co-workers ask him what he used to do before working there. He jokes that he was a pip with Gladys Knight, doing a little dance for them. That evening, Robert returns to his regular diner with the book he's reading. Not long after getting there, Alina enters the diner in skimpy clothes and heavy makeup. When a limo pulls up across from the diner, Alina gets a call from her pimp, Slavi, saying he has a client waiting for her. Alina turns out to be a young prostitute who is working under the name Terry for the Russian mob. Over the phone, she tries to get away from her job, since that specific customer treats her very badly. However, Slavi ignores her request and orders her to get inside the client's car immediately. Slavi then reminds Alina that the girl owes him and threatens to kill her. Hearing the threat, Alina has no other choice but to obey the Russian's orders. Robert observes the situation from a distance, understanding what is happening. The next day, Robert accompanies Ralphie, who is doing physical exercises to lose weight. When Ralphie is on the brink of giving up, thinking he's not strong enough, Robert continues to encourage the man so that he may become a security guard. Robert goes back to his usual activities, and once again, he meets Alina at the diner. This time, Alina got there first. She then walks over to Robert and asks for permission before sitting. Robert allows it and promptly notices the bruises on her face. After chatting for a while, Robert finds out that Alina is forced to work for Slavi because of debt. Her dream is to become a famous singer. She then hands him a CD containing a song sung by her. Robert seems very happy to receive the gift and promises the girl that he will listen to it. After spending some time chatting casually at the diner, Robert decides to take Alina home on foot. They have an interesting conversation along the way until eventually a car stops right next to them. A man, who turns out to be Slavi, gets out of the car and goes to Alina. He slaps and hurts her because the girl had disappointed her customer on the previous night. Seeing this, Robert is about to help Alina, but he notices one of the men has a gun. Slavi then gives a business card to Robert and asks the man to contact him if he ever needs a woman. They all get in the car and Robert sees them drive away. In the following nights, Robert no longer sees Alina at his regular diner. One night, one of the employees at the diner tells Robert that Alina was seriously hurt by someone and is currently being treated at a hospital. Hearing this, Robert finds out where she is and goes there to visit her. He finds Alina lying helplessly, with a face covered in bruises. Mandy, one of Alina's friends and co-worker, tells Robert that Alina has been beaten by Slavi for often disobeying his orders. Seeing Alina's very poor condition, Robert then decides to help her get out of that tough situation. The next scene shows Slavi entering a fancy restaurant he owns. He heads to his office, where several of his men have been waiting for his arrival to deposit some money from people who owed Slavi. Not long after, Robert enters Slavi's office and offers the man $9,800 to free Alina, so the girl may no longer have to work for him. The offer is immediately rejected by Slavi, who says he can make more money than that if Alina returns to work for him. After having his offer refused, Robert takes the money back and walks towards the door. When he gets to the door, he stands there for a while and does nothing. Robert then locks the door and turns to face Slavi and his men. 
Robert uses his skills and makes a brief observation of the people in the room, taking notice of the objects present and of the weapons they got. He reaches his watch and estimates a total of 16 seconds to take everyone out in the room. One of the men aims his gun at McCall but he grabs the man's arm and causes him to shoot Slobby in the throat. He then jabs a shot glass into that man's eye and also stabs a third man in the sequence. Robert gets a corkscrew and sticks it under the man's chin, finishing him off. Finally, he walks to where Slobby is lying and slowly watches him die. After all that action, Robert goes home and returns to his usual business. A few days later, Robert watches a broadcast on TV that reports the murder of Slobby and his men. It is said that the police concluded the bloodbath was due to a fight between gangs. The next scene shows a man named Teddy Renson, who has just landed in the United States and immediately rushes to the location of Slobby's murder. Teddy is an errand boy for Vladimir Pushkin, Slobby's boss, who was sent there to investigate Slobby's murder. In the meantime, Robert is shocked when he gets the news of Ralphie's resignation. He goes to Ralphie's place to find out what happened and finds him helping his mother clean up their shop. Apparently, the shop was deliberately set on fire by corrupt police officers since Ralphie's mother refused to give them the security allowance. Ralphie explains that he decided to quit his job at Home Mart to help his mom with the shop. In the evening, Robert secretly follows the corrupt cops who collect security allowances from small business owners in Ralphie's area. He then records the actions of the corrupt policemen and goes to them. He threatens the pair of cops in a dark alley, saying he'll release the footage if they don't stop their actions and give back the money they've taken. The corrupt cops threaten to kill him, but Robert easily gives them a proper lesson. After being beaten by Robert, the corrupt policemen do as they were told and return the money to local business owners. Since Ralphie's mother has received venture capital to renovate her shop and run her business again, Ralphie finally returns to work at Home Mart and continues his hard to become a security officer. Elsewhere, Teddy seems to be interrogating gangsters who are often involved in business with Slavi, trying to find out what happened. He does not hesitate to resort to violence to get the information he needs to find who's behind Slavi's murder. With no results, Teddy then conducts an investigation with the prostitutes who were under Slavi's command. By talking to them, he eventually finds out about Alina, who had problems with Slavi recently. He compels Mandy to reveal all the information she has on Alina. After being pressured, Mandy tells Teddy about the black man who came to the hospital to visit Alina. Since he already got what he wanted, Teddy eliminates Mandy. Afterwards, Teddy goes check the CCTV cameras at the hospital and at the location of Slavi's murder, where Robert's figure was seen. One day, Robert is again faced with a situation where he is required to act quickly. A man attempts to rob a home mark cashier, one of Robert's co-workers. Since there are many people and children present, Robert doesn't act allowing the thief to take money and the gold ring the cashier had. Even though he lets the man go, it is clear he registers the license plate of the car the man was driving. The next day, the female cashier is very surprised to find out that her ring, which had been robbed the day before, was mysteriously placed in the cash register. Robert is seen wiping a big hammer he borrowed from the store the night before. That night, Surprisingly, Teddy goes to Robert's house and claims to be a police officer investigating the Slavi murder case. Teddy then asks about the whereabouts of Robert, who confirms he was in a fancy restaurant on the night of the murders. Robert calmly answers all the questions asked by Teddy to avoid the man's suspicions. After questioning Robert, Teddy says goodbye and leaves. It is clear that both Teddy and Robert knew they had lied to each other. Aware that the Russian Mafia is now after him, Robert arranges a plan to leave his apartment. The next day, Robert goes to his usual diner to read his book. A man in disguise is sent there to take care of him, but Robert immediately realizes he's there for him. We can see that Teddy is watching everything from a car parked outside. Robert then easily takes the man out, kills the lights, and exits the diner. McCall finds Teddy in his car, takes a bunch of pictures of the man with his phone camera and walks away like a boss. Teddy and his men then chase Robert to his apartment but they don't find him there. While searching the apartment, trying to find a clue as to who Robert really is, Teddy finds nothing but drugs and torn sports tickets. Anticipating Teddy's moves, 
Robert turns out to be somewhere else, watching them from a hidden camera in his apartment. Aware that he is dealing with one of the largest Russian criminal organizations in the world, Robert decides to visit his old friend and colleague at the Defense Intelligence Agency, Susan Palmer. She uses her resources to give Robert information about Vladimir Pushkin and his operations. Susan also informs Robert that Teddy's real name is Nikolai Achenko. Intending to destroy Pushkin's operations in the United States, Robert first goes to Pushkin's cash vault, where Robert easily takes all of Pushkin's men out. He proceeds to lock them all in the refrigerator and makes one of Teddy's men call the cops. Soon after, he gets lots of evidence of Pushkin's illegal activities in the form of a memory stick. In the evening, Teddy is seen having dinner at a fancy restaurant. A man, who turns out to be a trained assassin, sits in front of him. He was hired by Teddy to kill Robert and says he'll take care of the job very soon. However, shortly after the man left Teddy's table to use the bathroom, Robert suddenly appears and takes his seat, claiming the man is not coming back. He also hands Teddy the hitman's cracked and bloody glasses. Robert then reveals that he already knows about Teddy's past and warns Teddy to stop pursuing him. Robert calls him by his real name, Nikolai, and gives him a choice, saying that all this can stop if they put an end to Pushkin's criminal operations. Teddy states the activities will continue and McCall leaves. Later, Robert leaks all the information he had obtained on Pushkin's operations. McCall also literally destroys oil tankers belonging to Pushkin, causing massive damage to his illegal activities. He ultimately destroys Pushkin's entire business in the United States. Afterwards, Teddy gets phone calls from Pushkin and sets up a plan to finally take Robert out. After doing some digging, Teddy and his henchmen go to Home Mart and take several of Robert's co-workers as hostages. He then calls Robert and threatens to kill all of Robert's co-workers if he doesn't come to the Home Mart store soon. Being aware of the store's rooms and facilities, Robert manages to sneak into the control room and tune into the loudspeaker to distract Teddy and his men. After knocking down some of Teddy's men, Robert frees Ralphie and asks him to help their co-workers escape through the back door. Once he makes sure Ralphie and the others are safe, Robert kills the power, leaving only some dim spotlights. He eliminates Teddy's men one by one using the tools available at the store and eventually confronts Teddy. Robert takes a nail gun and finishes Teddy with it. Three days later, Robert travels to Moscow finds Pushkin's mansion and gets rid of all of his guards. He finds Pushkin in his bathroom and has a brief conversation with him, turning the lights on and off. Robert announces he is there because he wants the head of the snake. Robert leaves and tricks Pushkin into electrocuting himself to death. After Robert returns to the United States, Alina, who has recovered from her injuries, approaches him outside the grocery store. Alina reveals that she has started a new and better life after being free from Slavi. She also thanks Robert for giving her a second chance and kisses him lightly on the cheek. Later in the evening, as usual, Robert visits his regular diner, but this time he brings a laptop along with his book. We can see that he's been replying to people in need, taking jobs as the equalizer. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, Please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.